Sunil, we just saw one of the companies you are uh, bringing to India. And your own company is an infrastructure company, infrastructure lending company. You're in a very traditional business, uh, so to say. How do you think large corporate houses can bring innovation into their companies? Because you have the resources, you have the deep pockets, but the criticism is always that big companies are too slow to move. So how do you bring innovation into your company? Well, I think uh, the first thing in life starts from awareness. So one, you start to create an awareness within your group about what technology can do to your business and how it can disrupt you, what are the changes happening. So first of all, you start to expose your people. Some get exposed uh, on their own. Some you start to get exposed to people because they've been doing things the way they have been doing in the past. And through that journey, then you start to work out how you create those disruptions. What are the challenges and the problems which you are facing in that particular business? Uh, and what technology can do? How you can apply those technology uh, solutions which are there uh, to solve those challenges and problems? And that's what we heard in the morning also uh, uh, from various speakers uh, that there are so many challenges. India needs to adapt its own uh, solutions to those challenges. Uh, and that's what we also cater to uh, in that area, especially in the area of finance and uh, the infrastructure. And that's where we are exposing and exploring opportunities and mechanisms of seeing to solve the challenges which we face. And in that journey, partner with uh, global companies, partner with domestic companies to see uh, what are the ways to resolve it. Uh, so I think in the infra area you know you set up a smaller organization that's looking at lending in a very different way so, so. i think in the financial services and in infra there are two key uh, areas which we have taken and i believe that is uh, the two key challenges and opportunities too if you look at the financial services and not only globally but in emerging markets credit is one of the key challenges credit is not available to everyone who really needs it and why is it so? We have seen today the economy in the last few years have been going through challenges because of the high cost of uh, risk which is there, the non-performing assets, so therefore banking system is not lending. So new mechanism, whether it is a peer-to-peer -peer lending or whether various forums of MFIs, etc., are now starting to emerge to some extent, but still not enough to resolve the problem. And not only here in India, I even see after the global uh, financial crisis in 2008, even in countries, developed countries like Europe and US and all, to get access to SME funding to uh, the small and medium enterprises is challenging. It's very challenging. Large companies can do it through bond issues and all, but the mid-sized small enterprises get challenged to get the debt. So one of the key areas to solve the problem is how do you do risk management? And I think that is where technology can play a very big role. Many solutions have started to emerge. We have been trying to work out on our risk management solutions by adopting uh, either artificial intelligence. In many cases, if you are financing equipments and assets, how you use IoT to track your assets and uh, work that out to able to mitigate risk. Because if you're able to mitigate your risk, whether you create a platform of peer-to-peer -peer or whether you create any platform to provide credit to people for their uh, activities, uh, you would need to manage that risk. And so, therefore, I think it's important to uh, do a lot more work. I'm sure globally work is happening, but I think that's where I yeah. think the great opportunity would be to find more and more solutions on risk management using technology. And you know, we talked about SMEs and uh, Asha, now I want to move to a, an entrepreneur, somebody who has an idea and a piece of paper. You've invested in over 100 companies as an angel investor. So what is it that you look for? How do you know who is the person who really has a moonshot thinking? What kind of support can be done? So, uh, so for me, Lakshmi, I think, I mean, you know, in, in most of my investments have been in the, in, in the United States, in the Silicon Valley, where we, are already, we already have a bunch of seasoned entrepreneurs, right? So it's a very different uh, scenario there. For me right now, the most exciting thing, that what excites me most right now, is the uh, is the sheer critical volume of thinkers and programmers and so on, tech savvy people in India actually, and I think India has uh, an opportunity to really be a global leader in two areas. One is on blockchain, 
and blockchain related fintech kind of you know applications uh, and uh, you know maybe even some things related to bitcoin and the second is going to be on quantum computing and that one is uh, i think google is releasing a quantum com quantum computing platform in about uh, you know 8 to 10 weeks actually and when that happens and when the indian programmers can plug into that i think we are going to see a disruption in uh, in in the way in which india has actually participated globally as a tech you know so far we've not had serious products coming out from india but this is the first time that i think it's going to be uh, taking a lead on a few things and i and i, I also think that you know on this question of uh, you know consumption actually we are going to be because of the kind of issues of poverty that we face, we're going to have to rethink consumption a little bit. So for example, you know, it's not necessary, necessarily a happy life to be having X, Y, Z, you know, variables in our lives. If we can rethink consumption more from an Indian perspective, yeah. of sort of more, even Gandhian perspective to some extent, of sort of saying that a frugal life is actually a more authentic life. Uh, you know, e even then, uh, you know, so those kind of, I think, thoughts and those kind of philosophies are going to drive both quantum computing and blockchain. Uh, on learning, somebody had mentioned here, uh, you know, that we must send 2 point or 210 million children to school and so on. That's also not really necessary. I think it was uh, Kalyan Sat Satyarthi was talking about it. But I also think that these days, given how much information is available to uh, kids at our fingertips, it's, there are other models of blended learning where children can still learn without having to go to schools. So one doesn't need to construct expensive schools and so on, you know. And right. so I mean, I think it's enhancing the education in a way that everybody can benefit. Yeah. So what are some of the, I mean, in the valley today, what are some of the areas where you're really seeing uh, that kind of a moonshot thinking? In which areas are you seeing that, wow, this could be something huge? It's blockchain actually so things which are going to be ported over on blockchain this includes everything from uh, you know from hospital and healthcare thinking to learning to entire banking ledgers and so on so that's definitely it's a huge disruption coming up uh, that is something nobody seems to really recognize the the enormity of what's going on right now on blockchain uh, but when you know it's like the internet right when when it happened we were like what is the internet but once it happened, we know that it disrupted a whole, it created a whole way of living. So I see that happening on blockchain. Uh, and the second thing definitely is on, on uh, you know, on robotics and on things like, uh, you know, I, I actually think that another massive disruption is likely to happen when we have quantum computing. It's because that just increases almost infinitely the level of computation that we can do. And it's open source. So it's available to the whole world. I think we should have our programmers ready with you know all the tools that are necessary for building on that quantum computing platform and you yeah, should talk just, about yeah. blockchain yeah, yeah just to so add there i just have wanted to share and that's what we've been working on blockchain one of the key areas which i believe not only for india but globally where blockchain can add a phenomenal value because whatever little i understand about blockchain is basically you create a community and it is in the infrastructure space so what we are doing is uh, in one of our businesses which you are looking at to disrupt, and that's our core business. Uh, actually, it is with that we uh, this uh, facility, which we see here today, was created, that we have these equipments. And just behind this is our yard, where when this was a complete jungle, it was only mountains. We created this equipment uh, yard uh, just behind this, from where we use the equipments to build entire facility here, yeah, which we see. And therefore, what in 2000, I remember in Hyderabad, we had done a concept uh, of an equipment bank. Okay. That was a physical, that time blockchain or uh, dot coms and all were not so prevalent. So we were doing a physical equipment bank whereby we used to take equipments as a deposit mm -hmm. from people uh, who had surplus equipment and no job. Oh, and we were leasing it out and renting it out to people who had a job but no equipment. Yes, and yes. that's how we created this concept of equipment <coughs> bank here. Uh, and that still continues. Yeah. Now we are moving into the technology platform. So we are creating, we are working out to create it on the blockchain uh, platform. And the reason why, because we cater to a community right. all yeah. over the country, uh, not only country, all globally, because so these globally. equipments are yeah. used all across the world. 
And in fact, uh, it could be more like an Uber model. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and same thing for for medical equipment also. That's true. You know, where doctors there's so many defibrillators and so on which are sitting around, nobody's using it. Nobody's them. using it. And imagine if those there was an Uber-like service, right, for those. So it's and people are doing it, by the way. So so really we are working on a uh, blockchain uh, technology to bring in. I think if we look at the uh, world, India in the last 15 years, by the private sector, invested over 300 billion dollar in infrastructure. In the next, and that by private sector, the public sector, ex the government expenditure direct was another about 300 billion okay. in the last 15 years alone. In the next 10 years, uh, India would have to invest over a trillion dollars. Mm. So with that kind of an investment in the infra, and now we see even US talking about revamping its entire infrastructure through PPP models. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Therefore, the kind of investment in the infra which will happen globally by emerging markets and developed markets, I think there is a huge opportunity using blockchain, using IoT technologies to bring down costs, bring down efficiencies of uh, the infrastructure facilities which we create. Say for example, today in India, we have about uh, 300 toll roads in the country by the private sector, and the government has another about 700 toll roads, so almost about 1,000 roads, and I'm talking government only, central government, I'm not talking the state government. If all these toll roads talk to each other, and there is a one integrated solution, mm -hmm. whereby people may be owning, different people may be owning different toll roads, mm -hmm. but the revenue to a user is so efficiently handled that based on how he is using it, he is able to pay for automatically. Imagine, and through a blockchain whereby you don't have to do reconciliation or anything. Right. It can be a phenomenal solution. And imagine what would happen if there was driverless cars. Yeah, so. That's another, you know. Yeah. Then those things I'm not even talking about. So therefore, yeah. the platform uh, of a blockchain technology where you create an ecosystem, where you create a community, uh, whether it is in the roads, whether it is in energy, as a utility, as a user, because we also have a utility company, whereby we buy power and we sell power. Imagine if you create a kind of a community within that. Right. So, and now with rooftop solar and all coming in, you can uh, create a phenomenal efficiency and solve the problem. Yeah. You same don't have to add so much of capacities. Right. Yeah. And in fact, same thing for things like solar grid and so on, you know, so that people are actually, even those who are off the grid could actually be still, you know, uh, getting actually access to certain kind of equipment and so on. Because what yeah. India and what many countries would have to do that if you are investing $100 in an infrastructure to create a value proposition of say 500, you have to see that investing $100, can you have a, as a, this morning we said that it's not a, a leapfrog, <coughs> you have to have a quantum jump. Yeah. So how that $100 investment can give you a return of a $10,000 in so the I'll economy. I'll give you an example actually. So for example, I think uh, you know in the, in the Grameen Bank, the Grameen people actually came up with a simple idea of a Grameen phone. So what they do is they simply go into villages and they give a phone to, uh, you know, one lady, or, you know, mostly women actually. And what happens is that these women then become like, uh, you know, they charge, phone back, right. you know, for people to come yeah. over, they queue up actually to use these cell phones. And, but what's, yeah. what it's doing is not just the, just the communication, it's unleashing actually the potential of these people to be economic players. I in think to system, wrap you know. up what we need to say is that it's about idle resources that are there, how to reutilize them, and with technology we can do it in a really large way. So thank you so much for both of your time. Who are Both of them are investing a lot of resources in corporate and uh, digital investment. So thank you so much.